okay. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a little thick, but I don't mind. I'm loving my purple door. And I want to, before we do anything else, any other details, I just want to add the grass to the bottom. And we're going to put our holes. We're going to um, cut some windows in here. Um, so let me show you how I do the grass. So I've just rolled out this scrap of clay. There's, I can tell there's some glitter in here. There's some light green. And I'm going to make a flat edge on the bottom. And we're going to just cut, let's see. I need it to be at least a half an inch high. And I'm just going to go kind of wavy. And I don't know why. It's kind of representing bushes and grass. And just, you know, it is what it is. I kind of like this part. You're going to take your motive and line this up right along the bottom. Actually, you know what I want to do first? You know what? Oh, hold on. I want to texturize this. So I don't have a grass, but I have this. I like this is called waves. So I think I'm going to use that. And I'm going to go a little thinner, too. I don't want this to be... All right, sorry, I should have prepared better. But before you cut it to be how you want it, you should texturize first. Let me go back out a little. Because it distorts. When I press on this with the texture plate, it's going to distort. So I want my grass to go this way. Yeah. So I'm going to lay this down, take my roller, give it some pressure, pick it up. And do it again. And oh, it's sticking. This clay is very, very warm. So, all right, I don't use any kind of baking powder. Some people use baking powder and stuff. And you shouldn't pull it off the tile like that either. You should use your blade to loosen it. All right, so now I'm going to cut a flat edge. And let's just divide it here since that's where it started. And I'm going to do the same thing with my... Uh, this is much thinner. So just kind of hold on to an edge of it. And really randomly, about a half an inch to an inch tall. Boy, that's thin. And this, this isn't my sharpest exacto knife either, so that may have something to do with it. And then just lay this along the bottom. I, I want to make a step, I think, so that's why I'm kind of starting this. Away from the... You might get some um, wrinkles or um, folds, but that's okay. Just work it around. And you know what? I meant to pinch the top of it, but you know what? Instead of pinching, I'm just going to tack it down. We're not going to see any of this bottom, so you can just flatten out your folds. Because this is on the bottom of mine. And I'll probably cover it up with a with a base. So that's what that's looking like. I need another little piece. I think I like this side better. Um, It can just overlap. I don't think I even need it that long. This is really thin.
couldn't even see where it um, connected. All right, so now we're going to cut some holes for windows. What style of window do I want? You know, like, I saw one, when you watch the videos about it and stuff, uh, that it had shutters, which I thought looked really cool. And, I mean, they could be purple, right? We could do them the exact same way as, I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make square windows or rectangular windows. This might be too small. I'm just going to, I could just cut them freehand, but let me see if I have something that will help me make it the same size every time. Nope. Um, you can make a template. You could do whatever you need to do to make this uh, consistent, but I'm winging it. I'm going to freehand it, and I'm just going to do it about halfway up right here and I'm going to make it rectangular because I want each part of the shutter would come halfway right you know I'm an architect I'm a fairy house architect and you just take this off and I'll line that the way I did with the white and we'll put a shutter on each side, about, you know, halfway the size of the window. And now I want to go over here. You know what? I'm going to do three windows. I'm going to do one in the very back. So I'm going to do another one right here. Try to make it, I think, halfway. And... That is so crooked. A little taller. Um, I think it's crooked and bigger. Actually, it's not too bad. And I'm going to do one exit directly in the back. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, so because it is a votive, I'm just going to cut a couple of holes, like a couple of flower shapes here and there. And if I end up covering it with clay, it doesn't matter. But I just want to do a few here and there. And I could do a couple hearts, but let me see how uh, many this looks like how many this looks like <laughs> anywho kind of random but it's also not random and it's um, I'm going to do a couple hearts just my smallest little heart one and this may get clay put right over it so that's the thing don't worry about it I mean if we had done this before we did anything else that might have been the best way to go because then you wouldn't be thinking about it as much you know, and I mean, you can cut into, you know, I don't want to cut into the grass. Let me just take these out. Is that it? I just did two. I think I want to do one right here. Oops. All right, so now we have, I want to do one more heart down here. My son just got home with a couple groceries. 
All right, so that's good. Hey, Matt, you need help? Okay. Uh, I think I want to put a piece of this color down here, but we don't have to do that right now. Let's work on the shutters. Oh, first we have to do the white around the windows. So again, and you guys have seen this, so I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Get my windows lined with the white, and then I'll be right back. Okay, got my windows done. I cut a few more holes with just like a circle, and we're going to cover up a lot of them because I forgot. I want to put a fern right here, and that might even go on top of the window and the um, shutters. But this is fun for me now because I'm doing something I haven't done before, and I love doing something new instead of making the same thing over and over going to put my wood grain lines on here. I'm going to give it a little more pressure than hopefully that'll yeah that's good. Then I got to take it off before we cut it and we're going to make some shutters right? So shutters they need to be about hmm the same height I mean I can measure it right? Why not? Let's see, it's an inch. Um, do I want to make it, do I want to make it the window width or the whole thing? I think the whole thing, All right, an inch. So I'm going to go like that and make another line at like the inch mark. And then cut like four pieces at least and put them next to does that look right? does it look um like they would be, yeah, I think that's how it would be. Cute! They could be a little thinner. I think I'm going to make them a little thinner. I don't need them. And then you know what else we could do? Sorry. So I'll go away and come back and have that, but I think I am going to put the boards going across too. But I think I'm going to make them a little thinner. Um, and then when we come back, I'm going to do the ferns. After these are on there, I'm going to do the ferns. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so this is so cute. Like, I am so happy. Oops. I'm happy I changed it up. So I just cut these little pieces to make it look like crossboards. And I made them a tiny bit bigger than the actual shutter. So they're going to show up. You know, they wouldn't close or look, you know, they're going to block the way. But it's just for added detail and texture. And I'm just putting them down with a little bit of pressure. And they stick to each other, see? It sticks. So let's see how this is looking. Adorable. All right. Let's do a fern. And see how it went right over the heart? But it doesn't matter. It went right over the flower. Doesn't matter. We could add more um, at the end if we want. That's a little, this one's a little higher, but I don't care. It looks gorgeous. Love it. All right, so the fern. What color fern should I use? Now, this fern is a Martha Stewart um, stamp, uh, mold, I should say. I think they came, I've had it for a while, and I believe I did get it at Michael's. Um, I don't know that they even sell them anymore, so I'm sorry. But I am going to put, you can put whatever, you guys, I want you to go with your imagination and put whatever you want. You could put a potted plant coming up there or whatever, but I'm just going to put ferns, I think, in between each window and one right here. All right, so I'm going to use the dark color green. And you definitely want it soft. 
And this is a very thin mold. That's what I like about it. But this is why I want to use it. Because look at it. It's so cool. It has such detail in it. So I'm going to put it through my pasta machine a few times and get it. See, this is one way you can condition clay too. You just keep running it through, fold it, run it through, fold it, run it through. And pretty soon it gets really soft. So that way you can save yourself time or, you know, save your hands a little bit. But I'm going to, you know what would have been kind of cool if we would have made lines going down too. Next time. Uh, there's just so many details you can add. So I'm going to just start pressing this into the mold. And like I said, it's thin. Like what I mean by that, it's not a deep mold. There's not, it's not deep. It's very shallow, I should say, instead of thin. But I think we're good. And then I'm going to cut away the extra clay. These blades are not sharp. I have the dullest blades. Oh no. And it's stuck. Let me push that back down. There we go. And see how thin it is, but you know what? That looks good because it looks like it's, um, let's see, I'll see what it looks like. It looks like it's see-through, um, like you see the um, stem. I'll show you. Oh my gosh, the stem is still there. I'm, I'm going to use it. It's just too cool. Oh, crap. <laughs> um, hello. i got to pick you up. I could have cut off more at the top. Oh, dear. I have the dropsies. I'm going to put it right in the middle. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of them. Then we're going to come back and do leaves on our vine. Alright, I'll be right back. Alright, I have this butterfly mold too. And you can always cut this out of a sheet of clay. Don't, you know, think you can't have a butterfly if you want one because you don't have the mold. I'm going to put a little rim of scalloping around the top, but I can fit a butterfly in a couple of places. And I just had this mix of orange and yellow, and I'm going to squish it into here and hope for the best. Hope I get a, a good um, image and I still have some of that striation of color. And you just push it down to get the imprint and then you cut away I think I did it. I think it's going to work. And you just loosen the mold. I mean, it didn't, it's just orangey with a little yellow. I'm going to pop that right here. No, maybe a little over to the side like that. And give it some pressure and it'll stick. And I think I want to put another one like in the back. So I'll do it again. Um, so I know this is long, but you can skip ahead or whatever. Turn it off if you feel like it. <laughs> I don't know how long it is because I keep stopping and starting. Um, but I figured this is how long it takes me to do it. It's not that long. Once you kind of know what you're doing and you gather all your supplies together, doesn't take that long. Well, that has a little blue or green in it. All right, let's put this one right here. Squish it down. All right, so two butterflies is good. All right, so let's do some leaves. And I have, I do have this leaf mold, but I'm not gonna use it because I'm just gonna cut them out of a sheet of clay and I have this one cookie cutter that I like. I like the shape of this cookie cutter. 
Um, so I'm going to just put these wherever. I don't know where I put that. Um, but because these are really deep, and I don't want my leaves to be that deep, and I could probably use them if I just put a little bit of clay in there, but I can make these. I can cut them. All right, so we're going to decide what color. I want this to be my, the same as the ferns, do I? This is the same color as the ferns. And then I'm probably definitely going to use some of this. I don't know if I'll use that one. Let's make it like about, this is a number eight on my pasta machine. And so I'm just going to lay that down. And I'm not going to texturize it or anything. And I'm just going to cut a couple of uh, leaves out of that. Like four and see, we don't, we might not use them all. And then before I go to my piece, I just kind of shape it and pinch it a little. And I use this tool. Let me come in a little closer. Um, my camera's still plugged in. I'm just going to make a, a vein down the center. And you can also put other, because this will all pick up the antiquing at the end when I add the black paint, all these little lines. So it's just nice to have, you don't have to put them everywhere, but I'm going to start right at the bottom of the vine and put it right here. And I'm really going to make sure these are stuck down because although I like to have the dimensionality, like see how it's sticking out? When I go to, like you can turn the tip of it, but when I go to antique this, I really don't want to rip it off. And I'll just use this and kind of stick it down. Um, I'm going to put one, so I'll just go or through here. I like to start bigger and get smaller, and I forgot that this is a much smaller votive. So I might not use any more of these. I don't know, these are, these are quite big. One more I guess I could do. I think I'll do one more and then I'm going to start adding smaller ones. All right, and I'll show you how I do the smaller ones. Let's use this bright clay. Yeah, what the heck. I, I could probably use the, um, the color of the vine too, but let's use this one. And I mean, you can always mix. Like I could mix some of the dark into this if I think this is too bright. But you just take your X-Acto bleed and you can make heart-shaped leaves like this and then kind of pinch it flatten it out and that can be a leaf or you just go like this and just make it a regular leaf like that this is soft this green I guess it's sculpy but you do the same thing and I would add that on this side, but I got to make the little vein. Forgot about that. And then right there, I just like to push it down. Make sure it's stuck. So see, you just start to build your leaves going all the way up. And then we'll add flowers too. I still want to add a piece that's going to cover this with the rock color. Um, let's see. I can actually make this a little smaller because I have it ready to go. I'm just going to make it like that. And again, you can pinch it and turn it. You can actually pinch the edges and make them a little flatter on the edges. And it starts to grow if you keep pinching it. And let's put this one up here. Make sure it's tacked down. I don't like to cover up my other stuff too much. I don't like that one. But anyway, so that's what you do, all right? So you just start building and keep building. I'm going to do a little piece right here of that rock color. I'm going to go make it a little thicker 
and cover up that part. Then the last thing I'm going to do, well probably not the last before we bake it, is, um, that's not big enough, make a little scallop for the top, the top edge. I don't think this is big enough either. Yes, it is. Um, so I'm just going to put that. And okay, babe. Like about there. I eyeball a lot of stuff. I don't... Well, I measured my shutters. And should we texturize it? Let's texturize it. I should have texturized it before I cut it because it distorts it. So pressing on it like this will distort the shape of it, but it didn't do it too bad. I can still use that and put that right here. It might be too thick. I think it's too thick. So I'm going to go down uh, a width, I guess, and put that there. And then we'll come back and I'll show you how I'm going to do the lip. Okay, just FYI, I discovered that I have this teardrop shape. This makes perfect leaves up, leaves, because you can just twist the top or whatever and make it, just twist the tip a little and make it very leaf-like. You can pinch the edges. It's just quicker. It's so quick to have um, cookie cutters. Make a little vein down the center, pinch the tip, and put a leaf right there all right so I I just wanted to share that and I'm going to continue on and then we're going to do our um, scallop okay I I'm gonna try and do the top now so that we can finish it off and make it look see I added just that down the bottom and I think I'm gonna leave it like that I don't think I'm gonna put a step but I'm going to try and do that striation technique again. I'm not the best at it, but I want to see if I can get these petals or this scallop to kind of look striated. I have some antique gold, a little bit of copper, and some yellow. So I'm going to just start to twist it and turn it and see what happens. And hope for the best. And I'm going to use it regardless because it just needs to look like petals. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to roll it this way first. I just want some metallic to show through. Twist it. And then fold it over. Roll it again, twist it again, it's working. I think I lost a lot of the copper. And now I think I'm going to put it through the pasta machine and see what we get because I only want it, it only needs to be a thin um, strip. I think I'm going to use this. All right, so what I'm going for here is just a small scallop around the top edge of the roof. I'm going to hand cut it. I'm going to use my long blade and just make a straight edge. And Hope for the best. Let me see, I'm going to get this in a direction that I think I can be consistent. And basically just that's it. I don't know if it's going to match up or if this will be long enough or if it's too thick. It's pretty cool. I'll just put it right around the front first.
I don't really love that that's not yellow. I'm going to put the yellow above the door. And that's all. That's it. That's all I wanted it to do. I don't really love this, so I'm going to cut this off. And connect another piece. But see, so that's how it's going to finish it off. I could have um, softened the edges a little. I'm just going to press it down really good. And trim the top, and I think that's it. I think I'm gonna that's gonna be my finished. Is this yellow on the bottom? Uh, my finished edge. I was thinking I could put like a rim, but it's really hard to put something on top of that. Now I have to try and make it the same size, kind of like. Yeah, some of it is much golder. It's not the same size and it's not even the same shape. I started um, Oh my gosh, I almost reached perfectly. But not quite, huh? I gotta put a. You know what? I'll make two. I'll use two of these right here. I'm going to just push it down hard and really get it to stick to the top and then I'll cut the um, edge. I'll, I'll go take the blade to the edge but I really want to stick this down and I'm coming up high like I'm pinching it up so that it comes up a little bit over the lip. But that looks cute. That's kind of what I wanted. Then when I add flowers, I can add some yellow, some of that color down here. I'm going to put some bit some of the bigger flowers down the bottom. And I'll add some orange flowers down here too. And then it'll kind of tie in all the colors. So the last, like, this all you got to do is just go like this around the top. And it just evens out that line. And you can actually see the striations in that, so I like that. It's just, you know, it's not a big deal. So, um, I'm going to bake, I think. I'm going to, you know what, let's make a few flowers with this. I have, this is a cake making... Uh, mold. I got this in the cake department and I have this little flower right here so I'm just going to press this into that and I'll show you how that comes out. You can do the same thing, you just take your blade and kind of, oops, I don't know what that was, shave it off and then you have this little flower. So I'll just put some of those along the bottom and that way it'll pull that down. Alright, so that's basically it you guys. I am going to leave the rest of the decorating to you. Um, bake this. So I'm going to bake this at 275 for 30 minutes. And I have a um, toaster oven in the basement that I use. Polymer clay is a little toxic. It has polymers in it and they say you shouldn't 
bake it in your real oven because they will stick to your oven and it contaminates things. So I have a toaster oven designated for my polymer clay. And um, after that, it should be hard and we will take the black paint and add antiquing or a patina. So you will see the difference when I do that to the, to the door. It's gonna just pop. It's gonna be so awesome, all right? So I'll be back. You know what? I think I'm going to make that a part two. All right. So I'll be back for part two. Thanks for watching.